In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create an ASP.NET Core Web API with the CQRS and the mediator patterns. By the end of the video, you will create a web API for the management of a bookstore. The link to the source code will be in the description below. My name is Pat. If you are new to the channel, consider subscribing because it motivates me to make more videos. Let's get into it. CQRS stands for Command and Query Responsibility Segregation. Simply put, the pattern promotes the separation of read and write operations when interacting with a database. Some fashion of CQRS even uses two databases so you can have them scale separately. In practice, in our API, the controller will handle requests Depending on the type of the request, it will send a query or a command to some handler, which in turn will talk to the database. In order to promote loose coupling, the communication between the controller and the handlers will be done using a mediator. A mediator is a pattern that helps with communication between a set of objects. Instead of the objects communicating directly with each other, the communication goes through a mediator. That's when the mediator library comes into play. It's an implementation of the mediator pattern. You will use it for communication between the controller and the handlers. Now let's write some code. To save time, I've already created a project. I use the ASP.NET Core Web API template. This type of project should look familiar to you. You can see the file startup.cs, program.cs and so on. In the folder data, I have a class named book context. Because I'm using entity framework, this is the class that interacts with the database. In the folder models, you can see a book class. This is our main model, which represents the book table in the database. I have removed the folder controllers. I will add the controller and its dependency in the folder book under the folder features. So we will need some NuGet packages, let's install them. I am going to use the NuGet package manager console, but you are free to use the NuGet package manager UI if you want. The first package I am going to install is the mediator. Then I am going to install mediator extensions for ASP.NET Core, this will help for dependency injection. All the packages we need are installed. Now let's set up the mediator library. In the file startup.cs, in the method configure services, I invoke the method add mediator on the service collection. The method takes the assembly that contains the code that is being executed. So this method will register all the handlers in the current assembly. Now let's create our main controller. I will call it books controller. The controller will need an instance of the mediator. I inject it in the constructor. Now that we have a controller, it's time to create the first set of features that will allow us to get all the books from the database. Let's create a new class. I name it get books. So here, I'm going to add the query and the query handler as nested classes. You can also separate them and put them in separate files if you want. As they are small, I prefer to group them as nested classes. The first class we need is the query. Let's call it query. So it implements the I request interface. The type parameter indicates the type that the request will send as a result. So next, I create a query handler class, which implements the I request handler interface. The first parameter indicates the type of the request it will handle. 
and the second parameter indicates the type of result to send back. The signature of the class tells that it will handle get books query and will return a collection of books. We need to inject the book context so we can use it. Now that we have a DB context, we use it in the method handle to retrieve books from the database. Let's go back to the controller. We are going to add the action method for getting books. I create a method named getBooks. With the mediator, I send a request which is the getBooks query. So this will send the request to the getBooks query handler. I decorate the method with the HTTP get attribute because it will be called with the HTTP get verb. Let's run the application. If I execute the request to the endpoint, you can see that I get some books. This is working. Now let's implement retrieving a book by its ID. I create a class called getBookById. Inside, I had a query. The type parameter indicates that the request will return a book. Normally, you want to return some kind of view model, but for simplicity, I will just return uh, the book. This request needs to provide the identifier of the book. For that, I had a property named ID. Next, I create a query handler that will handle the get book by ID query. I inject the book context in the constructor. In the method handle, I use the DB context to fetch a book by its ID. Let's go back to the controller. I add a new action method called getBook. It's decorated with the HTTP get attribute. The ID placeholder indicates that we will provide the ID as a query string. I declare it as a parameter to the method. I send a get book by ID query using the mediator. You can see that I pass the ID to the request using the property on the query. Let's check the result. First, let's get all the books so I can copy an existing ID. If I execute the get books endpoint with the ID in the query string, I get the book in the result. Now let's implement the creation of a new book. I create a new class called add new book. This time I need a command because I'm going to modify the database. The command implements the I request interface as well. It will return the ID of the book inserted in the database. In order to create a new book, we will provide the title, the author, and a description. So next, I create the command handler. I inject the DB context. And in the method handler, I create a new instance of a book based on the information from the command. I had the book to the database. I return its ID. In the book controller, I had a new action method. I call it create book. I decorate it with the HTTP post attribute. The method attribute from body allows me to specify the payload of the post request. 
In this case, it's going to be the add new book command. When I send the request, I, ex I expect to get the ID of the book inserted in the database. So with the ID, I return a created at action result. This will add the URL to fetch the book in the response header. So let's try out. I set the title, the author, and the description. So if I execute the request, you can see that I get a 201 response status, which indicates that the resource has been created. In the response header, you can see a location field. If I navigate to the URL, I get the JSON representing the book. So, okay, it works. So let's see how we can delete a book now. I create a class named delete book. I had a command. The I request interface doesn't have any type because the request won't return any value. So the property ID will allow setting the ID of the book we want to delete. I add the command handler. As there's nothing to return, I set the second parameter to unit. The unit types come from the mediator package. It was created because we cannot return void. So as in the previous command handler, I inject the DB context. In the method handler, first I need to retrieve the book. If the book exists, I can remove it and propagate changes to the database. And I return unit.value to indicate I have nothing to send back. So let's write the action method for deleting a book in the book controller. I had a new method called delete book. The ID will be sent in the query string. I send a book delete command. I return a no content result. That's it, let's run the project. First, I need the ID of an existing book. So I'm going to copy the ID of this book right here. So which has a string as the title. In the delete endpoint, I set the ID of the book I want to delete. And if I execute the request, you can see it was successful. So let's retrieve all the books. Okay, the book was removed. That's it for this tutorial. Mediator has some other features you might want to check like pipeline behaviors, notifications, and so on. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. See you next time.